Taylor here and today we have another Schmodown match. We have the Inner Geekdom qualifier between Miss Emma Fife and Jason Inman. Now, I dearly love both of these competitors. However, I really, really, really want to see Jason Inman succeed in Inner Geekdom. I feel like this is really where a lot of his strengths are and I think that he could do really, really well here. So I'm really hoping to see Jason Inman move on, but I will definitely not be upset to see Emma Fife move on if she does, because I'm always down for more ladies doing well in the Schmodown. Absolutely. So without further ado, let's check this out. Hey there, Schmodown fans. It's Thad Williams, your interim commissioner. I hope everyone enjoyed the tournament finals matches last week. Just wanted to update all of you on some happenings around the league. The contracts have been signed, and I'm happy to announce a few updates to the match schedule. Oh, no. As you know, this is Inner Geekdom Week. The winner of today's match will compete in Friday's Fatal Four match against Koi Jandrew, Jay Washington, and Rachel Cushing. The winner of Friday's match will try to take on the belt from Hector Navarro at the Spectacular. Yeah. And as I mentioned last week on Inside Schmodown, next week we return to regular season matches with a battle that's not so much about wits as it is about witty guesses. Only Stupid Answers is facing the Wild Berries. Yes! The winner will get a match at the Spectacular. I'm, so... I'm just kidding. Just kidding. That's not happening. I'm so but excited But it should for be a fun match. match regardless. Only Stupid oh. Answers and yes. the Wild Berries airs this Tuesday, November 28th. Also coming up, on Friday, December 1st, DC Movie News is entering the ring against Top That, Ooh. the team formerly known as Team IGN. After declining okay. a spot in the team tournament, we've all been waiting to see what the Top That heavy hitters would do next. Now you have your chance to find out next Friday against Mike Kalinowski and Adam Gertler. On December 5th, Mark Bernardin returns to competition to face newcomer Lon Harris. Okay. These two have worked in the same movie news circles for years. That's I can't gonna wait to see really what happens when they square off. And finally, December 8th is the Star Wars Fatal Five Way. Yes! With Stu Saunders from the Steel Wars podcast, Joseph Scrimshaw from Force, Force Center podcast, Star Wars Explains Alex Damon, that Shana O'Neill, the Geek Girl Diva, and the warrior amazing. himself, Sam Witwer. The winner will challenge the pit boss, Ken Knapsack, at the Spectacular for the coveted Star Wars belt. So there you have it, a bunch of fantastic matches the next few weeks as we go full steam ahead towards the Spectacular. But enough for me. You're here for the Inner Geekdom Qualifier between Emma Fife and Jason Inman. So let's get ready to schmodown. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I love her sweater. Cardigan. Emma Fife taking on Jason Inman. Can we have a whole lot of sweaty geekness that's about to happen in this qualifier for Friday's Fatal 4-Way? Absolutely. This is a big match with a lot of ramifications. Jason Inman has been chasing this inner geekdom title for a long time. He's been running. Yeah, he this, is what, this is where I think he belongs, though he's a great competitor at anything he does here in the Schmodown. This is his arena, and then we have Emma Fife out to try to prove that she is not just an interviewer. She is a competitor. She's been in teams with the Night Sisters, with Joelle Monique, and they've had some bumps in the road, and I think this is a big key match for her. So much nerd talent here today, and we didn't even talk about our special guest, maybe the nerdiest of the nerds, mm -hmm. the king of the geeks, Mark Andreco is here, Thank everybody. You. Nice to be here, fellas. Nice to be on this side of the table for once. It's a little bit less pressure, isn't it? So, well, I'm, so, I'm scared I'm going to mess up a question, so I always yell. I always complain over there when somebody messes yes, up something. The so. tails are turned, yes, Mr. Yes, Andreco, but yes. it's good to have you here. You Thanks. know the competition, and you know what it's like to be under pressure on that stage there. So what do you think about Inman Fife going into this match? Well, I think they're, they're pretty evenly matched. They're both really great competitors. Um, they both have specific areas of knowledge. They both have deficiencies as well, so like I always say, shots fired. The wheel, it, the wheel will be the deciding factor because I, I this could be a photo finish, and I hope it is because those are the most exciting ones. It's a great point, Ken, because you look at the wheel for the inner geekdom, and you have some Inman strengths on there. I mean, obviously, Star Trek is a 
edge on the wheel. Then when you look at Emma Fife and what she brings to the table, Emma Fife, like you said, might have a deficiency here too, as Inman might. But if you're walking down the street and you see Emma Fife walking towards you with a broomstick for Quidditch, turn around and go in the other direction because your lunch money is about to get taken. And the thing about Emma that's really interesting is because she's the commentator and because she does the post interview. The golden she, mic. She knows how to get under your skin. <laughs> By, I mean, she did it to me the last, my last match. Well, I, I was going to ask you. Now, now I, I, uh, the Lions Den is an interesting little group of kittens. We know that here. And I know you're going to come here and kind of just be a non-biased announcer. The whiskers but, are but off. But you, you and Emma do have a, a history over there in the interviews. Yeah, you know, I, you know, the last match that I that I unfortunately lost to a very worthy competitor, Ms. Rachel Kutchner. We've Cushing. all been um, losers recently. Uh, she, Emma's, Emma's line of questioning got under my skin, and I kind of went full heel on her, so I would like to take the time to uh, apologize for going full heel on her. I should have gone, like, th after the fact, I was like, wow, that was kind of mean. So, save your cards and letters. I am a, I am a man who knows my own flaws. Yeah, but you know I, what? If you're still sending <laughs> cards instead of hate comments, send all the cards yeah. you can. Actually, we send appreciate cards, that. Send cards and letters. Um, but, you know, so, but I can judge fairly on this. I think it'll be a really fun match. So. Yeah, absolutely. And both fighters really respect each other a lot. They they are determined to win, but they, like I said, there is a mutual respect here, Mr. Allen. There certainly is, Ken, and when you talk about mutual respect and maybe some light trash talking, that's what we expect to hear from both Jason Inman and Emma Fife pregame. Here's a quick look. Coy, Rachel, and Jay, you all have secured your spot to go for that inner geekdom belt. I need my spot. I have been chasing this belt for a year. Last year, I begged Christian Harloff to let me in the first Intergeekdom match ever. He wouldn't do it. He was like, you're in the team match. You need to focus on Scott Mance. He's a ball of tricks. And I, you know what? I held, I handled him. We won our match. I still could have done the Intergeekdom. So this is my shot to get my chance at yeah, that belt. I feel pretty comfortable where I am standing, you know, in front of a step repeat interviewing people after matches. But I like to get in there and compete every once in a while. And Intergeekdom sort of up my alley. So if you saw last time I played, I got screwed by the wheel. The wheel yeah. has been my unlucky heel this year. Every time I face that wheel, it either it, it blesses me like a baby or it slaps me like a bitch. And most of the time it slaps me like a bitch. I hate <laughs> that fucking wheel. The last time that I competed in Inner Geekdom, I had the first time ever competing in this competition wherein I spun a category on the wheel I was actually good at. And I got a little over eager. I uh, didn't quite listen to the full question and that kind of threw me for a loop going into the last question of that round, which I should have known. Herbology, it's like a real freaking thing. Nerd stuff is my life. This is my passion. This is what I believe. Seriously, if you were to cut my veins, the Starship Enterprise would come out. Seriously, it would. I live and breathe this stuff, and now's the time to show it. Jason Inman, if I hit that Harry Potter category in round two, I am not going to oh, answer questions before I okay. finish hearing the end of them. And I'm going to totally that. devastate. This time I'm going to get all the points that I need. You know, best of luck to you if you get uh, Star Trek in round two. You're a good man, Jason Inman, and I look forward to doing battle with you today. Emma is a very impressive competitor. You should not count her out by any match. I do think this is a 50-50 toss-up. But like every hero's journey, like Kirk versus Khan, like Luke versus Darth Vader, like Indy versus Hitler, I've got to take out the person that's standing in front of me. And Emma, I'm sorry to say, it's you. I'm going to break your wand, and I'm going to send you packing. But don't worry. I'm going to send you along with the sorting hat. Just make sure you say hi to the Dursleys for me. Wow. I mean, you see that there? I'm actually really proud of that because you are in a hot pressure situation right now just trying to get into a fatal four-way. I think that they handled the pre-interviews with class. We will see what happens when we actually get out onto the dance floor. Without further ado, Ken, let's hit the tail of the tape. That's right. One of these fighters will go on to face Rachel Cushing, Jay Washington, and Coy Jandrew. But for right now, we have Jason Inman. His strengths are DC, Marvel. DC and Marvel. He reads a lot of superhero comic books. Also, <laughs> Star Trek. He doesn't just look like Riker. He is Riker in his own mind. He knows a lot about that fan of an Emma Five, the Golden Mike, Harry Potter. Just look at her socks. Lord of the Rings. Look at her spells and wizardry. And of course, Star Wars. She's a big fan of that. Uh, at that as well. Uh, participating in Star Wars role-playing game shows. Star Wars Rebels recaps. This is interesting. Like Mark said. A lot of strengths and little deficiencies. Let's see where they match up. Ken, there's two things that we love to do when we have a special guest at the desk. One is make them buy us lunch. The other yeah. is guess who's going to win here today. You got Fife, you got Inman. I think all things being equal, I think it's going to be a photo finish. I think Inman by two points. He's Ooh, going with the favorite two here points. today. And without further ado, Ken, Mark, yep. 
If Y'all you ready guys, to do this? Are you guys ready? Is that pink jacket ready? This pink jacket has never not been ready for anything. Oh, that jacket! <laughs> did, did, is that the ghost of Josh Makuka? Well, then if you guys are ready, the crowd is ready, then it's time for the movie trivia showdown! An inner geekdom one-on-one matchup. Three rounds to a finish. All right, introducing first. Representing the Night Sisters. With a record of zero wins and one defeat, she is the Golden Mike Emma Fire. Oh, look at that! Here comes She's so Emma whimsical. Fight, casting a spell of joy over the audience. Um, look, her outfits are always on point. Her closet must be amazing. Spell. 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 That's one of the right. Inside out yeah. of uh, Spelly Arms. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> you just went full inner geek. I can. did. And her <laughs> opponent. Representing you, Team man. Trek. With a record of zero wins and one defeat. He is Jason Justice in the Oh my gosh. Here comes that Emma. is amazing. That is a, that is a Doctor Who reference. I got it, Mark. Sounds oh, there's a baby. Doctor Who reference. Goodness, a Doctor Who reference by Jason Evans. We expected Trek. We expected maybe Star, not Doctor Who. Coming out of the phone booth hot. Love it, I love it, I love it. All right, Mark, while the fighters get ready, go ahead. Will you all explain some of the rules to us? That's right. Miss Fife and Mr. Inman, you are in an inner geekdom matchup, like Ken alluded to. The winner of this match here today will compete in the Fatal 4-Way, which is just days away. The winner of that will face Hector Navarro at the Schmodown Spectacular later on this year. In this competition... You will hear 10 questions in round one. As soon as you hear the question, please write your answer on the whiteboard. When we ask you for your answer, please show the whiteboard to the camera at the same time you verbalize it into the microphone, which is very magical as well. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round one. Jason Inman, you are the favorite. Are you ready to compete? Let's engage. I believe that was a Star Trek reference. <laughs> Emma Fife, are you ready to engage? Ready. Those are legally binding answers. <laughs> it's time. Let's get ready to schmow down. Here we go. Oh All right. We will defer to our special guest who asked the first question of round one. The ceremonial first one, but it does count just the same. The first question is in the category of Harry Potter. What is the first name of Harry Potter's father? No, he had a daddy. <laughs> I had no idea. But he was one of them. Oh Five, four, Miracle birth. three, two, and one. Jason Inman. That is James. That is correct. correct. Emma Fife. James. That is correct. I would assume <laughs> nothing less. James. Great I, job, Emma. I Thanks, was you too, guess Jason. The Lord our <laughs> Savior, and I would have been wrong. Your next question comes from the world of Marvel. These are Marvel flicks. What did Peter Parker originally want to be called at the wrestling match in 2002's Spider-Man. I don't remember. I remember seeing that movie in the movie theater when I was four I years old. Yeah, a lot of tension over there, I feel, with the contract. Five and a four. I don't remember. Three, two, and one. Pens are down. Emma Fife. I don't think this is right, but he is a spider wearing a mask, so I said the masked spider. Ooh, I would have been intimidated, but that is incorrect, <laughs> right. Jason Inman. I'm pretty certain this is incorrect as well. Is it man spider? Oh, so close, the human spider. Uh, oh, man. Yes. The human the classic, spider. Human both spider. Of it was Bruce Campbell that named him, though. Bonus points. Swing and a miss. No, hey. points for All right. Inman. All right, guys. Third question is in the category of DC. DC, what's the character name of Christopher Walken in Batman Returns? Cue bad impressions now. Uh, I to can't tell the do the, the, uh, the power. Walken impression. That one won. On the spot. <laughs> Five. I was still four, doing mine. Three. <laughs> I didn't have two, time to finish. And one. You guys are ready. Jason Inman. Max Shrek. That is correct. I couldn't remember Max, but I did put Shrek. Mm, we do need the first and last okay. name of the right. character. There is a son in that movie. <laughs> and did you, did you know that Max Shrek was the name of the actor who played Nosferatu in the original Nosferatu film? And with that, Schmodan is over. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> We've accomplished our mission, and we Stay go back to the, vampire <laughs> to the man who knows everything about cinema from 1915 on, Mark Andreco. Until 1990. 
<laughs> Perfect. Next question, Mark. This comes from the category of Star Wars, yeah. my favorite. Um, what substance can sustain a person in perfect hibernation? Oh, I mean, that dang is, it. Uh, meth is the answer. Close. Blue oh, meth. Close. All right. right. Jason's uh, writing five, four, three, two, Repeat and the question. All right. Oh, that's one of your repeat the questions. What substance can sustain a person in perfect hibernation? All right. You know who hibernates well? Bears. That is one. Five. You ever notice that? <laughs> Three, two, and one pens down, and we go to Emma. Uh, carbonite? That's correct. Inman. I was saying carbonite. I didn't have time to write it out, so it's corbite. <laughs> corbite, we can't I ran out of time to write it. I mean, <laughs> corbite. I think corbite's a planet in the EU, yep. but that's not the right answer here. <laughs> you try to freeze Han in corbite, and Kylo Ren wouldn't get a chance to kill his daddy. And we move on to Star Trek questions. Worth one point in 2009's Star Trek. What color is the matter used to create the black hole that consumes planet Vulcan? All right, this is a strength for Inman. He's, he is done already. Uh, Emma's still riding yeah, here, and we have is, uh, a uh, countdown coming here in five, four, three, two, and one, Mr. Inman. That is red matter. That is right. Uh, I said uh, green, which is opposite of red on the color wheel. That's so. right, but wrong. <laughs> All right. Very true. So Jason Inman gets the point. That question brought to you by our good friends over at Crayola. Ken Napslock with the next question. All right, sixth question. This is in the category of Lord of the Rings. What, what form does the giant firework set off by Merry and Pippin take in Fellowship of the Ring? Did you know Fellowship of the Ring is a movie in the Lord of the Rings franchise? I've heard oh. that. Yeah, I thought it was the Ring franchise. That's why I'm here. Five, four, <laughs> Watch that tape, three, you're dead. two, and one. Uh, pens are down and ready. Emma Fife. I think it's a dragon. We'll accept that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a dragon. <laughs> it's <laughs> right. It is. Wow. Also known as Smaug. Smaug. You hear that, Makuga? <laughs> Smaug. All right, next question. All right, here we go. Uh, Mark Andreco stepping up to the plate, touching my computer. Sorry, sorry. Hope you washed your hands. There you go. Yeah, what is that picture? Whoa. Um, it's my private life. <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, this number Question number seven comes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the Avengers, during Steve Rogers and Nick Fury's conversation at the gym, where did Steve say he should have left the Tesseract? All right. Justin, uh, I'd love to have a conversation with either one of those guys in a gym setting. That's what I'm most confident. I would love to have a conversation with I'm Chris Evans in a gym. Five, the muscles are getting four, the gym, not the three, bathroom. Two Showers and down. one pens are down. Jason Inman, bottom of the ocean. That's going to be correct. Yeah. At the bottom of the ocean. That wow. is correct. Close game. Close game. They got the line exactly right. Very impressive work. We move on to your eighth question in round one, and that comes from the Hobbit. These are the movies that are also in the Lord of the Rings franchise, just not as good. In the desolation of Smaug, what region of Middle Earth do Bilbo and the Dwarves encounter the giant spiders and the group of eleven led by Legolas? Group of in what eleven. region of Middle Earth? Uh. I'm not up on my Middle Earth mapping, on my topography. I, I am just not for these ones. Five, four, three. Two, one. We got some head shaking. Emma Five. Uh, I put Berkwood Forest. That is correct. Oh, <laughs> that's what I said as well. Hey! Oh, boy! Everybody gets a point. <laughs> Team it up there. Great job, Emma. Thanks, you too, Jason. We really knew that. Totally wasn't well, a guess. Actually, I got five points married, this time. time so uh, there you go. Uh, number nine. Emma. Number nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. This is in the category Rick. of DC I'm doing well. EU. Okay. Alfred. In Batman v Superman, Dawn of name? Justice. I know who played Alf in the hit TV show in the 80s. Not factoring in here. No. We should have an Alf category. I would love to have an Alf category. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens are down. Jason Inman. Jeremy Irons. That is correct. Jeremy Irons. That is correct. All right, Emma we have a space. hot ball game here. Seven to six is the score right now. One more question in round one, and that will be administered by Mark, an ALF enthusiast, and Draco. The category is mixed bag. <laughs> Perfect. <Great. laughs> okay. uh, in V for Vendetta, who played, Cla now I know why you have me ask this question, who played closeted homosexual and talk show host Gordon Dietrich? Are you a big fan of talk show hosts? Are you a talk show host? 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what the... You like the number 10? My middle initials V. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Pens down, Emma Fife. I was going to write it was definitely someone, but uh, I cannot remember who. Uh, that is close. But <laughs> it was definitely Stephen Fry. That, that was the nice. right. Yeah. Wow, and with that answer, Jason Inman takes a two-point lead. If you remember, Ken, at the beginning of this very uh, match, I do. Mark... Victor and Draco <laughs> predicted that Inman would win the entire match by two points. He now finds himself with a two-point gap between him and Emma Fife as we move on to round two. Uh, the great right. equalizer, the wheel. The wheel. How, and how, how are you feeling, Mark? I pressure on you points, asking these so questions. I'm tied with Emma. You feel I'm good not here? Doing too yeah, bad got, got a little tongue tied because yeah. you know two good comedians, uh, two good announcers. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna want to. Yeah. Hold up my end of the bar. I'll be, at your, yeah. I'll be on your talk show any day. <laughs> and we move on to round two, which is affectionately by some known as the wheel round. Each competitor this is going to get a spin worst. at that there wheel, and you're going to have a category that corresponds to five questions up here at our answer desk. Each question is worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can check for multiple choice, at which point the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind, competitors, there is stealing in round two, and if you don't like the category you spin at first, you are allowed one mulligan, which is golfing term for do-over. <laughs> Jason Inman, you are yes. currently in the lead, so would you like to have the first spin of the wheel, or would you like to defer to Miss Emma Fife? I would like Miss Emma to have first shot at the wheel. All right, hey. give another, another Fife's going to get a crack. So I, I don't know that there first There it is. Put pressure on We're looking for Harry Potter, Ooh. Lord of the Rings. Marvel. I'm going to spin again. She's going to spin again. Right, give it a big spin. You got to think. If you love your Potter, you yeah. love your Lord of the Rings, you, you give it another shot. spin to take a shot. Star Wars, Star Wars. it is. <laughs> Emma Feist, as a matter of fact, hosts a show called Pencils and Parsecs. She knows a little bit about Star Wars. And then you, because you're a huge Star Wars fan, will be administering the questions to Ray Skywalker. Excuse me, I read that wrong. Emma Feist. All right, here you go, Emma. You get the five questions. Remember, you do have multiple choice. Yep. If you want, question one: In the Phantom Menace, Qui Gon Jinn said there is pod racing on what other planet? Ooh. Give me the multiple choice. <laughs> All right. A. Coruscant. B. Alderaan. C. Malister. D. I think it's Hoth. C. I believe it is C. Malister. That's correct for yeah. a point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Malister. Pop your name for children in the eighties. All right. Question two. In Revenge of the Sith, what is the name of the commander who was told to execute Order 66 against Obi-Wan Kenobi? Oh, multiple choice. A, Commander Gray. B, Commander Cody. C, Commander Stone. D, Commander Rex. Stone? A. Incorrect. Uh, Incorrect. Commander Cody. That is oh, right. Yes. Oh, that question is for you, Cody. Oh, that's Jace. what I said. <laughs> Cody Hall, I getting a point. I guess myself. <laughs> Execute order 66. <laughs> All right, third question okay. out of five. In A New Hope, where was Luke planning to go to have R2-D2's memory erased? Oh. Um. Oh, crap. I'm totally five. blanking. Uh, give me the multiple Four. choice. All right, Sorry. we have A, Mos Espa. B, Anchorhead. C, Talu. D. Moss Eisley. Uh, Anchorhead. That is correct for yeah. points. <laughs> I mean, you all get right, a transport the there for pretty much all around wherever you're going. All right. In question four. In Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Which Starfighter squadron makes it through the shield gate to assist rebels on the ground? <sighs> Multiple choice. A. Red squadron. B. Blue squadron. C. Gold squadron. D. Green squadron. I think it's Red Squadron. Incorrect, oh, Jason. It. Is it blue? It is blue! Oh, that's wow. a huge deal by Jason and nice. That's a two-point swing. Blue. And it's the second time in this match that colors yep. have felled Emma Fife. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. General Merrick's Blue Squad. All right. Fifth and final question. In Return of the Jedi, how does Jabba refer to Han, frozen in carbonite, hanging on the wall? I don't, I'm multiple choice, sorry, I don't remember. No apologies needed. A, most prized possession. B, favorite decoration. C, best bounty. D, most cherished possession. Uh, can you repeat the answers? Sure, it will not count as JT rule. Um, 
A. Most prized possession. B. Favorite decoration. C. Best bounty. I feel like it's D, B or D. Possession. I think favorite decoration. That's correct yeah. for a yeah. point. That's a big point because All Jason Emmett right. looks like he knew that answer, but now Emma mm. Fife closes the gap to just one. And now it is Mr. Inman's spin at right, the wheel. On, He's been eyeing Ooh, it as he would a lady way. on a dance floor. There we go. The man nice can cut spin. a rug, Ken. They call it the Inman Boogie back where he's from. And he has boogied his way into the category Marvel. Marvel. of Marvel movies. Jason Inman, it's, a collector of comic books. It is. Comical booklets here. But uh, he's also the host of, uh, you know, DCL Access. Ooh, could he's this be a in his background. company decision All right, we're going to need a decision here in five. Let's do it. All right, Ooh, Marvel. Let's do it. it always up for a fight. This is Marvel. These are Marvel, so this could be anything that has ever been Marvel film related. Mark Anthony. Okay, question number one. You ready, Jason? Yep. Who played Bobby Drake, also known as Iceman, in X Men, X Two, and X Men: The Last Stand? Is it Sean Ashmore? That yeah, is correct. Is. Holy that is. crap! Who knows that? He got two points. I knew it. <laughs> Three point lead. I'm quite doing as well. All right, your next question. In Blade Two. What is the name of the elite vampire squad that Blade reluctantly teams up with? I, I need the multiple choice for this one. I can give you that for one point. Is it A, the Night Stalkers, B, the Reapers, C, the Blood Pack, or D, the Slayers? The Blood Pack. They all sound like great metal names, but that is the correct one. <laughs> one point goes Jason Inman's way. He now has a four-point cushion. Question number three. In 2005's Fantastic Four, Ben Grimm, ben Grimm has developed feelings for blind artist Alicia Masters. Who plays Alicia? Oh, the Who girl from... anything for that movie? Multiple the choice. The girl from... Uh, a, Jada Pinkett Smith. B, it's Carrie Washington. E. Henson, it's C. C, Carrie Washington. D, Janelle Monet Robinson. C. Yeah. That is correct. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. It's been a confident, partial guess there. Your next question. In Logan... How much money is paid to Logan to take Laura to North Dakota? I don't. I think I know this. I don't remember that but one. But I don't want to give her the points. Multiple choice. Is it A, $20,000, B, $60,000, C, $80,000, or D, $100,000? Is it twenty? dollars It, in fact, nice. is twenty, nice. And yeah. you get a point for your trouble. It is now yes. 15 to 9. Yes, so politely. It was very nice. Very, <laughs> very good matters here by both competitors. Your fifth and final question. In 2004's Spider-Man 2, what job does Peter get fired from because Pizza he's delivery? always late? Pizza delivery. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> Two points for Jason Inman. Wow. And th that is what you expect from an Inman getting a category that maybe some of his fans weren't sure how he was going to do, but he seemed confident in Marvel, and the decision to keep that wheel red really paid off. Yeah, absolutely. A, uh, a commanding lead, but it's not impossible for Emma. She uh, has some pressure on her here, but those numbers could sink Jason just as much as they could elevate her. This this is still anyone's game going into round three. We have seen crazier things happen in a round three, especially when it comes to inner geek. To Mark Andreco, your read on the match so far. Um. It, it would be fun. It would be fun if she comes back and makes it close. <laughs> it would. She, would. she, she does need to avoid the TKO. <laughs> yeah. TKO is yeah. possible here, but like I said, those numbers are where your fate lies. And those numbers are what we are going to receive from our competitors right now in <laughs> round oh, three. You're going to get three questions. Those are valued at two points, and then three points, and then if we get that far, five points. They're all from different movie categories, and that is why we need your three numbers. So, Jason Inman. If you can go ahead and give us a number, three numbers that range from 1 to 17. I want 17, okay. 0, 1, gotcha. and 9 to celebrate the Enterprise coming back in 2009. <laughs> he still did it. Even without Scott Mance, he still did it. All, All right. right. We have right. 17, 0, 1, and 9. And now, Emma Fife, your favorite numerals. I will take 3, uh, 6, and 15. Those are all legal integers, and we are ready to go. Ken Knapsack will be administering the questions to Emma Fife, and like Ken said, Andreco, we are at risk of a technical knockout right now. Emma Fife has some work in front of her. Yeah, absolutely. Emma, you chose number three. I just want to confirm, right? Yes. Good, because that's Harry Potter. Oh, good. Harry Perfect. Potter. Perfect. There yeah. we go. Oh, it's, right. it's only worth two points. <laughs> two-point question. Who? Two-point question. 
Hagrid gave Dudley Dursley the tale of a pig. what animal in Sorcerer's Stone? Hmm. Really? A dog? That's incorrect. Ugh, I don't remember. Incorrect. We were looking for what? pigs. Oh, oh that's no. right. Oh, God. Uh, I can picture it now. The magical All right. pig tail. Oh, she rough. definitely needs this next one to avoid mm. the TKO, and you chose the number six. Number six, that category is who said it? Oh, boy. Who <laughs> said it? Three-point question. Who said certainty of death, small chance of success? What are we waiting for? Hmm. That one I don't know. I feel like it's from Lord of the Rings, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Who said, certainty of death, small chance of success, what are we waiting for? I'll go with K2SO. And your winner, by <laughs> way of technical knockout, I feel so bad Justice. for Alan. I feel like the lights get to her a little bit because I feel like she knows more. The answer, I oh, like I was right. It was more of the rings. So plug there, though. Jason Inman, a a hell of a match that he played. He knew what he wanted in round two. He might not necessarily got in his favorite category, but he was able to maneuver his way around this entire match. And then Emma Fife, you just you got to know it's a pig's tail because they're very famous for those curly little tails. That's they have. right. Hey, look, all hats off to Emma here. She came in the ring, and sometimes it's those numbers. And even then, when you get a category. That you know, uh, I'm a Star Wars fan. I, I could struggle on a question that I thought I would know, and and that was a that was a deep cut with Hagrid in the tail. So what are you going to do? Certainly, and, and Drake. I mean, if anybody has any question about Emma Fife's overall inner geek of knowledge, look at what she was able to do along with Jason Inman in the first round. There were points flying everywhere. Yeah. You just get stuck with a, a difficult category in round two, and that might make or break you. Yeah, no, it, it was, it, it, these questions, these were tough questions, all these questions in this final round. I was, these felt, all felt like five planners to me, but that's why I'm not competing in energy. <laughs> all right, we are going to go, though, Mark, backstage right now to Jen Sturger, Yay, who was with Jen. both the winner and the loser. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? I'm Jen Sturger here with Mr. Inman. That was a fantastic match. Thank you so much. you got to be feeling pretty stoked. I feel really good. I, I feel good that I, I didn't go out there. I didn't stumble. Um, I took a Marvel category that people were probably surprised that a DC guy took. But you know what? This is one step closer to that four-way. I've been wanting that belt for over a year. And, Jen, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be mine. You took your time in that second mm -hmm. round. You know, you didn't, like we said before, you didn't jump to conclusions. Mm -hmm. or And you, you, you definitely went for the multiple choice when yes. you had to. Yeah. What, what was your strategy doing that? My strategy at that point was I just wanted to keep the lead. Mm -hmm. I was so worried that if I went for an answer, that I would give Emma two points. So I knew that I just had to let them say the word, and, and as soon as I'd hear it... And she's a dangerous she's competitor. A, her, yeah. Marvel is a strength of hers. I knew that if I gave her the chance to steal it from me, she would, and I didn't want to give her that shot. So going into that third round, so you had to be feeling pretty confident. I did. I, I did until they said Harry Potter. And as soon as they said Harry Potter, I was like, oh, she's... I'm going to have to fight for this. I'm going to have to fight for this. And again, at the, everybody might have discounted Emma out at the third round, but I didn't. I was so worried because she is so varied in all her knowledge. She's just like me in the same uh, inner geekdom. A that, good all around. Yeah, she's all around. She knows a little bit of everything. So even with that lead, I wasn't confident. Now, we're throwing you right back into the fire later this week. <sighs> Man, when am I going to have the time for all this stuff, guys? So now, <laughs> because you've won this match, you get to compete in the four-way like yeah. you spoke of. And that's against Washington, Coy, mm -hmm. the crusher. Yes. I mean, how are you feeling going into Friday? I feel pretty good because I trained a lot to come into this match. I watched a lot of movies. A lot of montages. Uh, a lot of montages. Uh, memorized a lot of starships for no reason. That's just usually what I do in my hobby. Uh, I, but it happened to work for this one. So, uh, But, you know, I have one person that I'm really scared of. Really? Who's that? The Crusher. Rachel, yeah. The Rachel Crusher you better believe it. Cushing. I'm very scared of her. The other competitors, um, I think they're they're kind of like me. They're, they're, they're varied. It's going to be all around luck, but Rachel is a machine. Hell yeah, she is. And if she hits She's one awesome. of her favorites on that wheel, we're all dead. <laughs> I, I agree with you on that one, but what's it going to feel like to be champ for you? Uh, it's going to feel like destiny. Nailed it. <laughs> That's all, enough said. <laughs> Can't argue with that. We'll see you Friday. Yeah, see you.
And I'm not going to lie, this is a little weird. I, you know, I feel a lot more at home here than I do out at the table there. Like, this feels a lot more natural. Yeah. I think that's what it is. It's like, if I could just have a mic in my hand at the table, like, I'd feel more in my element and, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe I'd do uh, better. <laughs> maybe we work that out for you next time. Perfect, yeah, perfect. Definitely I like a little that. weird. Like interviewer that. on interviewer. It's pretty cool. Um, that was that was a little that was a little disappointing. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm I'm disappointed uh, in my performance, but you know, you win some, you lose some. I uh, let's keep it real though. Like you were in it. Yeah, I, I did pretty well in round one. I was only a couple points down from Jason Inman, so I felt pretty good going into round two. And then, you know, Star Wars is definitely a strong category for me. But at this point, we've had whole schmodowns. We are running out of Star Wars. Yeah, questions. exactly. We are running out of Star Wars questions to ask. So. The level of Star Wars question, unless it's around one question, which usually the round one questions encompass more of like a general kind of knowledge, hence the carbonite question. But like in round two, the questions start getting a lot more specific. And again, it's like we've had a whole schmodowns full of Star Wars, and there's a whole lot of Star Wars. So it's like even if my knowledge in say one particular area is particularly strong, it's not necessarily going to translate to be all across the board. Is that why you're kind of upset right now? A little bit. Oh. You made me want to hug it's you. Okay. <laughs> Aww, oh, we all love you. And and look, okay. that just goes to you show you that even so when you good. put something on the you wheel that so is good, your Emma. strength, like the Quite questions are life. completely Hashtag unpredictable. Yeah, We've seen life. people that are like, I'm musicals, I'm dance movies, I'm I mean, action movies. Can we talk and about the number killed. of times that Team Action has landed on action and had to go multiple choice for basically every Damn. answer? Damn! I don't mean to interrupt this interview, but Emma, you are fantastic. You are a champion in your own right, and you helped build this Shimoda out. So I thank you Thanks. for a great match. Aww. <laughs> Aww, Emma, it's cry. okay. We're water proof mascara. <laughs> That's all right, but Emma, Emma, we're going to see you back here again here yeah, soon. Yeah, I hope so. I don't know. Aww, I might just stick to this. She's going to make me cry. No, <laughs> never. We will not let that happen. <laughs> Women need to be represented in that geek world as much as possible. So we'll see you again soon, all right? Thanks, Jen. <laughs> Love you, girl. Well, you see it there. I mean, they're handling both the winner and the loser with the grace and, and class and competitive fun spirit that they had in the pre-interview and that we saw throughout this match here. Jason Inman will be moving on to the Fatal 4-Way, which we remind you airs in just a few days here. So, Mark Andreco, I'm going to give you your Koi Chanru, your Jay Washington. I will give you now your Jason Inman. And who else? Rachel Cushing. Yeah. And I... And Rachel Cushing in this match. Who do you like oh, coming up in the fatal four way? Once again, the wheel, the the wheel is the, the thing yeah. there. I think I think. Um, so Ra you don't like anybody? No, you no. I, 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 th <laughs> I think I think Rachel or Jason mm -hmm. would be my would be neck and neck for me. But once again, as we see here, if the wheel isn't in your favor, you can have a commanding lead and then just go down in flames. Yeah. But if everything being equal, I think it's between Rachel and Jason to go to, up against Hector. Uh, Ken Napsack, when we look at the future that would be of my Fight prediction as well. Mark. I still think that it is bright. I think that there's some yep. storm clouds. You got to get over that that first hurdle of getting a solid W in an inner geek to match. But she has all the game in the world to yep. do just that going forward. Absolutely, I really. Hope Hope she continues here. Uh, it's just two losses. We've seen anything enough. You can come back from that. Look at look at the year JT he had a couple yeah. years ago. Now he's on top of the world. So you know, Mark, as good as anyone, you could turn your fortunes around. That's right, and you guys can turn your fortunes around if you are not already on the Facebook fan page. Movie trivia showdown. Request to be a member. They will approve you. Keep it classy in there and have some fun. And also check out the showdown run uh, rundown. The showdown runtime. It's the showdown <laughs> rundown. It's a great podcast on iTunes. Go ahead and download the latest episode of that right now. Absolutely. Frank, Aaron, and Brian do a great job giving you the pre-game and post-game stats and stories That's up, boys. and analysis. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this was fun. Wow. So, Emma almost made me cry there at the end. Emma, you are so great, and seeing you be part of the Inner Geek Den makes me so happy. And I know it was tough, but you're still doing so great, okay? Um... I am happy to see Jason win. I know he's been wanting to be a part of the inner geekdom for a long time. Um, and he's really, really passionate about getting that, that title. So I'm really excited for Jason. And I hope that Emma keeps competing, that this doesn't get her down enough to where she stops. Because I definitely want to see Emma keep competing because she's great. And I feel like everything just kind of got to her a little bit. And she was rushing through things a little bit and got flustered. And that happens. And... Hashtag fight for life. Um, but what did you guys think? Did you want Jason to win? Were you rooting for Emma? 
what's going to happen in the four-way on Friday. Who do you have for that? I personally think I agree with Andrako. I think it's going to be Cushing or Inman. I would be happy if either of them won because, like I said, Inman's been wanting this for a long time. And so is Cushing, and they're both really, really strong competitors. So I'm really, really looking forward to that match because anything could happen. They could both get qu crappy wheel rounds, and someone else could totally take it. So I'm really excited to see that so we can find out who is going to face Hector at the Spectacular. Thank you so much for watching, <laughs> as usual. Please leave your comments down there so we can talk about what just happened. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed your time here, and I will see you all next time.